Guys, Blue Kool-Aid coming at you. Got you over here at the EUVI. This is the 195 Angstrom. This is usually green, but I've ran this through some uh, filters because I've seen this. It was only there for one frame. And what draw my attention to it, this is the sun, guys, and I'll show you the original here in a minute. But uh, the faded area look here is the corona of the sun. This is the surface. Okay. Now, obviously, this is some sort of object. I don't know what is what that is, um, but I do think it's an actual object. I've not seen a camera anomaly look like that before, um, which is one clue. Another clue is we got two little filaments reacting off of the sun with it, pointing directly at it. If you guys go watch the the time lapse there um, from the 24th, you'll see it. It's there. Okay, you'll see it react. Um, you know and so basically what I'm saying guys is I don't think this is a a camera thing. That's my main point here. I think this is actually something that was there. Um I don't think it's there now. I think it's moved on. But this like I said this is back on the 24th and Sechi runs 2 or 3 days behind. Um I've learned to kind of go to Iswa instead, but I hadn't been. Sechi's just it's behind a lot and the HI1 and HI2 hasn't updated for like over a week okay i want to show you guys that first and the second thing i'm going to take you guys to is um i'll take you over here and i'm going to give you a basic definition of solar wind because i think this is important i've talked about this before what is a solar wind guys okay it's basically the <coughs> the movement of electrons and protons and alpha particles um it says this plasma can sit so i guess it's plasma at some level um if that's the actual term for it um but it's the movement of those from the sun outwards not necessarily to earth just in all directions wherever this you know wherever that wind is and um, that's why coronal holes increase solar winds okay it, it's the corona it's not the surface the corona is the actual uh atmosphere of the sun so when there's a hole in that our solar and it's earth facing our solar winds increase now why am i telling you this right now well because we've been having these events okay and i've talked about this briefly but i'm, I'm going to go in a little bit more in depth right now um we've been having events that kind of make you go hmm okay now i think most of us have seen that before okay something similar to that is that so out of the ordinary no but when it's happening every day multiple times a day for like two weeks straight. I mean that that means that something's going on. As far as activity. Some, something's caused that activity to increase. And we're seeing it on the charts. And it doesn't. We have predictive models we can go look at. And it doesn't. It doesn't correlate sometimes. Okay. If you guys. And, th and this is another little tip here. If you're just looking like trying to figure out. Solar wind speed. Okay. You come here to this the SWMF tool to give you one one capture, okay? And of all, all of these tools, it gives you the most up-to-date capture, and then it, it updates every five minutes. So you can get a new picture, unless you want to go to ISWA and get the time lapse, okay? But the shortened version of this is that, that number there is direct correlation to the solar wind speed, okay? That number should be between, I don't know, I guess roughly 250 to 600, if I'm guessing right here, um, anything over or above that, we should, you know, stop and look at it. Now, again, that's pretty fast. Okay, if you see that thing get up over 2,000, that, that means it's moving pretty fast. Solar winds can move up to, I think it's like, uh, uh, what is it, 2 million miles an hour at the high end, I think. And these, these are solar winds, guys. These aren't CMEs or solar flares. I believe those come off sometimes, most of the time, faster than it's a typical solar wind. Um, so, again, just wanted to bring that to you. And we're seeing this happen a lot. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this real quick. Okay. This right here is the predictive CME tracker. Okay. It'll give you, I think it's like a week or 10 days of what they think is going to happen 
okay now they do change this if something does happen as far as like a cme or increased solar winds for whatever reason like a coronal hole opens up earth facing or they do change it now okay but i want to explain this this graph to you here real quick i'm going to pause it right away because i'm going to explain this okay here on the left okay the yellow the yellow dot is the earth on all three of these okay the blue box is stereo b okay the red box is stereo a stereo b we haven't gotten data from it for a long long time like years stereo a is where we're getting our data from i believe um i think that that's the way that it's working i'm pretty sure if not it's vice versa that um i i do believe though i think we're getting most of our data from stereo a uh but anyway what you're looking at here is obviously you're looking down on our solar system here on the left this is the orbit around the sun of our planet and all these other satellites that it's showing okay over here on the right is the same thing but all they've done is made the the circle line the orbit line a straight line so we can kind of visually see it better okay what you're going to see is you're going to see like right in here it's going to get blurry you'll see it shoot off the sun here and kind of go out that way in a spiral direction um it's it's pretty evident when you see what I'm talking about here. I'll go ahead and hit play. There it went. Okay. Now, if you guys look over here, you'll see it. See that? Okay. And I'll do it one more time. Okay. And there. Okay. Now, again, I think we just kind of had a, like a glancing blow. Um, so... And something else I want to point out here, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, show you this real quick, like, and we'll just use, uh, well, I guess we can use this as, in, this is as good as any. Um, when we see activity back here behind the earth, okay, most of it can be explained by the activity coming from the sun, okay? If you see our bow flex, our bow shock right here, flex and move around right as these solar winds hit us. And then you see all this stuff back here react. Okay, you got to blame that on the sun and the solar winds. Okay, now when we look at this and the solar wind speed hasn't increased, nothing's going on, but yet we see stuff happen back in here. We got to question what, what's causing that, right? Now, you know, most of us, at least in this community, kind of believe that there is something back here. Don't know exactly its position, but it's, it's reacting with this also, okay? The other, the other thing I think is going on, it's more than just one object, okay? I think sometimes we have an object that's down here, and it actually goes underneath, and then we'll have reactions that way, okay, if that makes any sense. Now... <coughs> Robert Dunn has his own theories over there too on his channel. He thinks that there, and he shows this on some of, on the Milso. It shows like objects, like celestial objects out in front of the Earth between us and the Sun. So I think some of that energy is getting hit into these objects, and then basically when they can't handle all that energy, they just pulse it out because that's what we see. All right, and what I mean by that is we see pulses of solar wind. It ain't a continuous flow. You would think that it would at least go up to a certain level and stay there for a minute when we have a coronal hole facing the earth okay it would be more consistent but when we see huge jumps from like you know when you see this number here the 1507 which is what it says right there if you see it go from like 250 and it bounce right up to that that's a pulse because then it goes right back down obviously when we see something like that our magnetosphere is going to react Okay, and that's why we see the activity behind the Earth a lot of the time. But it can't all be explained by the sun, and that's the whole issue here. Okay, that's why we even show any of this, because it can't be explained just by simple solar winds or CMEs. Because we're not seeing the CME, and we're not seeing, you know, even their models, their predictive models aren't showing any uptick sometimes. Now, sometimes they do. Okay. So when they do, we, yeah, we do see stuff happen. But 
I think what's happening is, like I said, there's other stuff out there influencing us. And I think it's getting more and more frequent. And a matter of fact, I know it is because in the past couple of weeks, we're having events like this at least daily, usually multiple times a day. And before, we weren't seeing any of this, but maybe once a week. Okay, so, you know, you take that for what it's worth and draw your own conclusion. But this is the kind of mess we're looking at. All right, I've never seen a signature like that. Something that's become pretty uh, normal, I'm calling it normal very, very loosely because it didn't used to be. Um, basically, we've seen this, and why are we seeing it? Who knows? But obviously, you can kind of see the shape of a sphere right here. Now, what? why I drew it like that, right, just like that is, see, we got this bow shock out front. Well, if we're having activity from the back, would the earth maybe generate another bow behind us to kind of help us is that what's going on here because we're having stuff come from this direction you know it's just a theory a lot of theories out there guys and i think they're all valid for the most part um one more thing i'm going to touch on here before i end this video um it was brought up by a sub that maybe you know we've talked about this magnetic north splitting Basically, we have four poles now, two in the north, two in the south. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually what's going on, but I think it's something that maybe we could look at. Um, CERN. We haven't really talked about that here a whole lot here on my channel, but, you know, the stronger magnetic north is actually on the side of the globe. That You know, CERN's kind of like right there. Could this have something to do with it? Now, I'm just mentioning this because I, w I thought it was a good thought. Um, is that actually what's happening? I'm not sold on that. By no means, but do I think it's a possibility? Of course I do. I think it might have something to do with it, you know, because that is a pretty <laughs> a pretty uh, extreme thing. You know, those big particle colliders, I mean, man, that's some hardcore stuff. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that to you guys um, and show you guys here, you know, pretty much this. All right, that was my main thing today. Um, I seen that, and I thought, well, you know what? And people should see that. I think that something's happening here with this reaction. And again, guys, go over to EUVI at, at ISWA, and uh, you know, go over the one. The it'll be the green one, the green colored one. I think it's 195. Um, well, we'll just go look real quick, uh, just so you guys know. Uh, actually. We're just going to go over to Sechi real quick. Come on. There we go. It's the 195 Angstrom. And we'll go ahead and look at it real quick here on Sechi while I, guys, while I got you guys here. It's on the 24th is when this happened. Okay, is when I seen this. Um, it's getting ready to show up here. It'll pop up any time. Come on, man. Run slow on me. There it is. Okay. And again, you can go to the EUVI S1 and see right up to today. So this is what it's seeing. There's the time lapse of the whole day. Okay, you see that? And it reacts. I, can I go in? Yep, I'm going further. You see that? I mean, it does it make it all the way off the sun? I don't think so. I don't think it actually made it off and ejected or anything. But... You know, I just thought it was kind of odd that that object showed up at the same time those things were reaching out. And again, just watching this at real speed, you're not even going to see that object I showed you. You got to slow it down and look. So, but anyway, guys, there you have it. Um, hope you guys have a good week. Um, God bless. And go support, you know, a lot of our channels. You know, Robert Dunn, uh, Maverick Star Reloaded. Um, John King over at Best Damn Pod Show. Guys, he's been getting hit with a lot of hate. Um, I don't know the exact extent of it or even what's actually going on. I just, I'm just i judging by his videos that he's been making. He's actually mentioned it. Um, you know, it kind of sounds like he needs some uh, encouragement. You know, go over and give him some love, guys. Um, even if you don't agree with everything that he thinks or says, he still does a really, really good job of you know, getting information out. 
even if you don't agree with, you know, what he believes or what have you. Um, but he's not afraid of that, and that's great, because that's the way we all should be. So, uh, anyway, guys, God bless. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.